to First Take on this Friday Eve. Max Kellerman, how are we doing? How are you doing? Fantastic. Stephen A. joining us from Philly. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How y'all doing? How's everything? What's going on? You ready to do this? I'm always ready. Still, still licking Silly your question. wounds from oh! yesterday? Or are you, you, you ready to get another Please. one? I'm sorry, I don't recall you being on the show yesterday. Were you on the show yesterday? Oh, I forgot. You were in, you were in the studio. You were in New York. All right. Okay. Trash talking already. Right. Professional trash talkers right here. A little testy. I like it. Coming Let's up roll. in the show, you do not want to miss why Des Bryant is in the news again. And these guys debate whether he will last in Big D. But we start with that bad man who hasn't been himself lately. Aaron Rodgers will look to get back on track against the Bears on Thursday night football. These two teams faced off at Lambeau last season on a Thursday night when the Bears defense shut down Rodgers for a 17 to 13 upset win on Thanksgiving. Green Bay is more than a touchdown favorite tonight. Stephen A, which Aaron Rodgers will we see against the Bears tonight? Well, I don't know whether the bad man that I know him to be will show up, but I certainly think that an elevated level of play will take place, and we'll see a better version of Aaron Rodgers than we have in recent weeks. I mean, when you look at Aaron Rodgers right now, the Green Bay Packers have the 25th ranked pass and attack in the entire NFL. That's just putrid. That's not something that we're accustomed to seeing from Aaron Rodgers, completing just 60% of his passes, already having thrown four interceptions just six games into this season, which is not awful, but at the same time, it's not reminiscent of what we're accustomed to seeing from an Aaron Rodgers. And then I look at some of these receivers, and I think this is where it comes down to. Eddie Lacy has to be out because of that ankle injury. Nile Davis, who they just acquired from Kansas City, I'm not going to get too excited about that because Charkandrick West and Spencer Ware were both ahead of him in Kansas City before Jamal Charles came back. So that means you're a fourth stringer that ultimately lands in Green Bay, and the only reason that you're there is because they've run out of running back. So I'm not sure what kind of a running game we're going to see from them, but at least Nile Davis is a legitimate running back as opposed to Ty Montgomery coming out from the wide receiver spot to have to get in the backfield because the, in, the Green Bay Packers were devoid of a running back. So certainly there are going to be some improvement there. But I'm looking at the receivers right now, and I got to tell you, a Randall Cobb, 28 receptions for 293 yards thus far this season. That's not overly impressive. A Jordy Nelson, 26 receptions for just 312 yards. Devontae Adams, 15 receptions for 218 yards. I'm looking at these guys right now. And what I'm suspecting is that these guys are having a difficult time getting open, and that's contributing to the demise of Aaron Rodgers as we know it to be at this particular juncture. Now, you're going against the Chicago Bears. They're 1-5, but let's not be deceived by that 1-5 record. A lot of their games were competitive this year. John Fox, he's not the coach for the future, no question about that, probably beyond his prime. But he does know football. He does know how to coach defense. This team is ranked 19th against the pass, however, which isn't that impressive. But it isn't god-awful. So it's going to be real interesting to see what's going to happen tonight. I'm predicting that Aaron Rodgers will have a better game than he had last week against the Dallas Cowboys, that he had the week before against the New York Giants. Uh, maybe John Fox will try to emulate what Ben McAdoo did in terms of containing Aaron Rodgers in the pocket. But I think he's smart enough and skilled enough to figure this out. I expect Green Bay to win this game. I expect Aaron Rodgers to throw uh, for about 300 yards and throw three touchdowns. I think Green Bay's going to win this game. I don't think it'll be a spectacular performance, but I do think it'll be better than what we've seen. I think it's going to be spectacular. I think Aaron Rodgers balls uh, tonight against Chicago. First of all, the Bears' defense gives up the wor sixth worst QBR to opposing offenses, or rather, sixth best for the opposing quarterback uh, of everyone in the league. And Aaron Rodgers, by the way, when you his adjusted QBR is top five in the league. Rivalry game, all that stuff. It's right. The time is right for Aaron Rodgers to start balling. And part of what we're seeing in terms of his fall off, I think, is just kind of bad luck on his part in the sense that all – Athletes come to the point, especially long dominant athletes, come to a point where their bodies start to change in imperceptible ways to us, but they lose maybe a half step. I'm not saying it's noticeable with Rodgers. Physically, they have to start making adjustments, and before it really occurs to them that they have to do it, they go through a little down period, then they figure it out if they're great, which Aaron Rodgers is, they come back up. That coincided with the fact that this year, a lot of the reason Rodgers is being criticized is because he lost to the Vikings, to a head coach who may 
makes his living stopping Aaron Rodgers. Then he plays his, a head coach who is his former quarterback's coach, who knows exactly his strengths and weaknesses, exploits the weaknesses, and then a Cowboys team whose defense has actually been pretty good this year and piggybacked off the Giants game plan. So that's th – those – the especially the two games against Chicago and especially the Vikings, excuse me, uh, Dallas and especially the Vikings, are why people are feeling this way right now about Aaron Rodgers. And even with all that, he's still been pretty good, just not up to his normal standards. But against this bad Bears defense in a game where he really needs to ball, Aaron Rodgers, who is, you know, okay, in the last year and a half, he hasn't given us tons of evidence for it. He's just been a very good quarterback for the last year and a half. But before that, he was the best player in football. And I, I, I tend to think when a guy's been the best player in football for, say, three or four or five consecutive years, that he doesn't suddenly just fall off a cliff, that there are reasons why his performance takes a dip, and there are also reasons why it can come back up. And this week, at least, it will look like his performance is back up. Well, like I keep telling you, Max, I continue to be amazed by the fact that you're so quick to lean on numbers instead of the eye test. With those eyes of yours, I really don't understand it. I just don't get it. I really, really don't. But we'll work with that right now. The fact of the matter is, is that looking at the eyeball test for me, watching a Jordy Nelson, watching a Randall Cobb, watching a Devontae Adams, I don't see receivers that are really getting open. I don't see receivers that are really separating them. So now, don't get me wrong. There have been a couple of occasions when that's happened. I saw Aaron Rodgers miss two flagrant passes, including a touchdown pass that should have gone to Randall Cobb. Yes, they're getting open on occasion. But the degree with which they used to get open before Jordy Nelson suffered his injury at the beginning of last season, that, to me, has directly correlated with the demise of Aaron Rodgers. It's, and, and, and I think it's fair. Everybody knows how I feel about him, especially Mollywood. Everybody knows I call him that bad man that he is. But I do think it's fair, based on what we've seen for the last season and now season and almost a half. Based on what we've seen, I do think it's worthy to ask the question, Aaron Rodgers, was it really about Jordy Nelson? Because since Jordy Nelson has gone down, You've been a shell of yourself. We've seen Jordy Nelson come back but not be himself. We've seen Randall Cobb be there and show himself to be a viable number two but not necessarily a number one. We've seen the elevation and the maturation of Richard Rodgers last year anyway when he was playing your tight end spot. Eddie Lacy was fat last year and that did not help. Thank goodness he, do, he, he lost that weight this year. He just got the high ankle injury, but he's in shape now. But when you look at Aaron Rodgers, it seems his, his demise has seemed to correlate directly with Jordy Nelson not being that dude. Mike McCarthy's calling plays now. He wasn't calling plays last year. So there's been a lot of changes, but it seems that he's been solely dependent on Jordy Nelson. I don't believe that as good as I thought Jordy Nelson was, I don't believe that speaks to the greatness of Aaron Rodgers. I think he's a bad man. The flip side to it is that he's not making a, he's not helping me make a strong case for him right now because he's been a, a bit above average, but that's not what we expect from the star that is Aaron Rodgers with all of this discount double check commercials and now, you know, sitting up there and giving motivational speeches in the locker room and, 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 and swinging a golf club and making commercial with the commercials that he's got with his teammate Clay Matthews, which is all fun and it's great. But with those commercials, with the shine, it's got to the point where now the way that he's performing, we need to ask ourselves, why is he receiving that? You got the commercials. You haven't won a Super Bowl in damn near six, in about six years. I mean, what's all the praise for if you ain't going to answer the bell on Sunday afternoons? If, if you're talking to the point about where we're going to have to start test. asking that question. If you, you, you don't like my numbers because they're records of events and it proves my point, I'll just do eyeball test, okay? Let's just do the eyeball test sure, with Aaron Rodgers. Let me tell you what I, sure. what I you see. You can believe that. Let, me, see what, let me tell you what I see. When I look, you take your glasses off for this one. Let me tell you what I see. Sure, sure. When yeah, yeah, I will depend on what you see. Yes. I, 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 have, I have confidence <laughs> in what you see. Absolutely. Go that's ahead. That's right. That's right. 
What I see in Aaron Rodgers is a guy who still knows what he's doing. He doesn't look, okay, except throw out the Minnesota game. The Minnesota defense is designed, and as I said, the head coach has a job because that whole thing's about confusing Aaron Rodgers, and they do a good, they do a great job of that, and they're the best defense in the league. Throw that game out. I don't see a confused Aaron Rodgers. When Aaron Rodgers scrambles, whenever, you know, even when he has to buy time in the pocket, when guys are swarming around him, he has a game plan. He knows what he's doing. He just hasn't been very accurate with the ball. Part of that, as I said, is natural vi variance in a guy's performance. It's not going to be the best season of his career every year. Part of it is what you're saying. The receivers aren't as open. They're not as talented due to injury, et cetera, as they were once upon a time. But it's not as though the guy doesn't know what he's doing anymore and isn't making the proper read most of the time. All the stuff Hold you on. really – and it's not like he's not still fast and he can't still throw. He just hasn't been very accurate recently. Nobody – but not a single soul alive said that Aaron Rodgers didn't know what, we, what he's doing. We know that he's a cerebral quarterback. We know how smart he is on the football field. No one's questioned that. But what we marveled at throughout the years was his ability to throw that football, whether standing stationary or scrambling out of the pocket. This dude was a marksman with that football. He was that accurate. What has become flagrantly obvious is that he's not as accurate anymore. And this is while standing in the pocket, being contained. He's tap dancing. I've said this about Tom Brady, like the late, great Gregory Hines. God rest his soul. Now I'm seeing Aaron Rodgers tap dance like that. He doesn't seem comfortable. He seems inaccurate. I dare say he seems distracted. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. But it's getting to the point where we got to start watching this dude and asking, what the hell is going on with him? Because we're not seeing the same Aaron Rodgers. That's all I'm saying. You'll see him tonight. Here's the return of Aaron Rodgers. You're waiting for him. Here he is. Watch. I think so, too, just because okay. it's against, right. against we'll the Bears. Green Bay favored by seven we'll find and a half. He lost, he lost on Thanksgiving last no, year to the Bears. No, I do. And it, if, he, not, if he loses yeah. to them tonight, high alert, then it's the, the panic level uh, rises much more because that's scary thought.